investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 19th of April. Gosh, April seems to have flown by. Uh, what we're all looking at here is the Dow. Uh, let me get to this right now. I just did it for the market update. We've got the Dow up 312 at 34,723. What I said to subscribers, and I had a, a couple of questions about this. Uh, let me see if I can get this right now. Uh, that was there, that was here, and that is, hey, yeah, yeah, where did it go? Um, I had my Dow chart right there. Okay, there it is, Dow chart. Um, so what I do every single day for subscribers when I send out my newsletter is I show the Dow daily in two, two patterns right here. One has the uh, different moving averages plus my notations and trend lines. This one here has some of the same, but it also has the MACD stochastic and on balance volume. The uh, and this one right on the on the right is the 120 minute chart, and I discuss exactly what's going on, what we're looking at, why we're looking at it. I had something. Someone helped me because I had a reading yesterday. Uh, yeah, at the close, I didn't see intraday, but when I looked at it this morning, with the with Richard Arm's Trin Index, this is a short-term trading index, I call it the Chapman Wave Trin Gauge. I just use the numbers, I don't use his technique or anything like that. I just, the way he gets the numbers is the way I use it. And it said it hit 9.83, that had to be, uh, that must have been a mistake. And it closed at about just under five. On a day like yesterday, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, even though I was on the road most of the day, I. Um, or at least a lot of the day, I was following it, and I, I there was nothing in the market. Even the sudden turnarounds to the upside and the downside didn't suggest. And this, and I, I went to Control R, which is my way of refreshing, and that just didn't change at all. So it's a print. It must have been a print error or something like that. Did anybody else get um, a high trend gauge? Let me know. Um, so this is the most important thing right now. What we're looking at is the Dow moving like this. It has once again, I use this trend line. It's called the Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. And basically, it's a really simple technique. But what I'm looking at is, if I can just get this right here, there, click. If I can get this to show right now, it'll be good. There it is. So there's a pattern that I talk about. Price rises up, usually goes to like a DE or F, and then it suddenly falls, and you make lower highs and much lower lows. At a certain point, it finds some support. It doesn't necessarily tell you how many bars it's going to take. Sometimes it's five or six, sometimes it's much longer. But at some point, it breaks to the upside and takes out this trend line, and that means you can have a move one to one to the upside in the same angle, the same number of bars, going towards that left side high. But if, like here on the side, You've got slightly higher high failures. Those are your peaks that you're going to be looking at one at a time. So what I've done is I took out this trend line. I said, you know what? I like to be as conservative as possible. I'm going to the trend line of three, three days ago. And that says even as we speak right now, if I was to make that green, I don't like to make messy charts, but I'm going to do that for now. If I make this green and I make this pink, uh, I'm in the I'm in the repellent zone right now, and that says that you want to see a pretty decent move. Can it do today? You know, there's a lot of evidence with some of these commodities pulling back. Not the ones I'm going to talk about in a moment, but some of them pulling back, especially crude oil. Um, it, that says there's a chance that if we can touch the top. In this case, I usually say it doesn't have to close above. In this case, it must close above 34,889, the high of the 14th. If it does that, you've turned the corner and now you start to make higher highs and higher lows. That is what I'm anticipating. We still remain long uh, from over there. It was around about the 15th of uh, 
March, I think it was, just under 33,000 via the diamonds, adding to a very long-term, long position from just about the low of 2020. Um, so now what we're looking at is, within this context, we're looking at this resistance. Can it break out? That's really important. S&P is way below, the Dow is the leader in terms of the major indices. The uh, S&P is up 44 at 4436. Yeah, I'll do that right now. Just a quick question came in. Could you show us the futures that you were working on earlier? Well, oh, man, this, I'll show you this. Uh, it's a little frustrating because I actually had yesterday, it worked out just fine this morning. For some reason, I was so busy with my newsletter, I saw it at, and I had everything ready to go long at the 40, uh, 4376 level. Uh, it's embarrassing to say we're at 4434 right now. And all these notations, it doesn't matter about the notations. All it means is that the S&P is doing fabulously right now. Look at this. So another question came in. Basil. Basil, I see you're now using your automated Chapman Wave support and resistance lines a lot more in, in what you're showing us. How come? <laughs> you know, I've had this year when, when um, the late um, Herb and I were working on this 12, 13 years ago. Um, I found that I use it, but I have my own levels that seem to work very nicely that I've worked on. But I have to tell you that I've got this chart right here. This is a two-minute E-mini chart. And you can see these levels. And it's not that the levels are there. They're actually fabulous. Look at the resistance levels. But, you know, I use the 200-period moving average. I use the 9 crossing the 14. I haven't even got the MACD or the stochastic on this particular one. I, I I practice very often with naked charts. I just I take out everything. I've just got a blank chart, and I do the chart patterns. Why? Because the chart patterns are patterns I am so familiar with. They are the generic. They are the uh, fractals. In the in the one minute chart, there's very little difference. Or look at this two minute chart. You can tell me whether this is a two minute chart or a monthly chart or a yearly chart. Patterns repeat over and over and over. And look at this extension. Once it broke above in this cup formation right here, and I am talking about something I'm not in right at this moment on a trading basis. Um, once you break out in the Chapman Wave cup and ladle pattern above the left side high before a peak D, it means you should go sharply to a peak D, pull back, retest the low, and then if you hold the key support level, in this case the 200 period moving average, you can go flying to the upside. Well, isn't that what we've done? The high today so far, the low is 43.71, the high is 44.34.75. So this is what I'm going to show you. I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because not that many people uh, do the intraday trading, um, you know, because I, I try to limit my time. I like to stick to different things, and this is what I do when, I'm, when I've got the free time. And we, now we've finally got that leg D, a missing leg D in the 120 minute chart, in the, in the 10 minute chart. Sorry, I'm mixing time frames. In the 10 minute chart, a lovely pattern. And what did we just do uh, based on uh, the, where did it go? Based on. Right, and a peak D in the one minute chart. So maybe we're gonna pull back a little bit here. All right, enough with those. A question came in, I'll start with the first question was, could I look at SWIM? SWIM is, uh, SWIM is uh, Latham Group Inc. Designs and manufactures in ground residential pools. Great move up, this is a really nice move. Up 69 cents, 30.95. Thank you. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks, we're back. So we were looking at SWIM. This is uh, Nathan Group uh, Inc. Designs and Manufactures Inc. Kind of residential swimming pools. Uh, this is a very interesting stop because it was kind of languishing. It didn't do anything very um, optimal. It, it kind of showed that it was trying to form a base, but it just kept making lower lows and lower highs, made a dreaded H pattern, and took, broke it, went lower. Then rallied right sharply, then came back and set, kept making lower lows. Now it's trading up 80 cents at 14.07. SWIM is the um, symbol. Opens at 1330, hits a high of 14.07 where it is right now, and the low is 1330. I like this very much because it's in the area of the comeback kid where the summer is about to approach. This is where people start, they should already have. A year ago, booked their pools. But funnily enough, this is what I always read in the summertime. It's when a lot of people say, hey, "We've got to get, a, we've got to get a pool. We've got to get a pool." By the time the order comes in, they don't get the pool until the next summer if they're lucky. Uh, so this is very interesting. I like the action right now. The weekly says, "Wow, there's a lot to do." Yes, the MACD is stronger now than it was before. Stochastic is uh, also a little bit lower. We got to go. Day, the daily is the is the the benchmark because the monthly is just horrible. Uh, it was an IPO back uh, last year, and it went from around the 23 area, screens up to the 34, then plummets down, and now and the recent low is at about just about 12.30, I think it was 12.27 on the seventh. And here it is, almost two points high. That's a great percentage. I like this, and I, I, I see that you've done it via uh, um, using um, short puts and you're using long calls. That's You do this very well. I'm not going to tell you what to do because you've got your own methodology. What I am going to say is I think you've got yourself a really nice instrument with the potential to avoid market machinations right now. It could be independent because it's looking towards the summer. As I say, it's a day late and a month late and, a, and probably a year late. But whoever's buying right now won't see their pool for a long time. Being an indoor pool, if it was a rubber pool with a little rubber ducky, I'd say, you know what? You can have it next week if you're lucky, maybe a week later, but not, not indoor. So I like it. It's trading well. The 120-minute the chart is in leg D. 
but it's after a big pause at peak C, which says this D could in fact recycle. I like it. The key support now would be around about 1378 to 1365. Actually, you don't even want it to get there. It just has to have a minor intraday pullback and then close higher again tomorrow. And that says it's on its way to try to tackle the, the left side of the 4th of April, 1422. Hmm, it's almost there. And then the next one is the 30th of March at 1466. On a weekly basis, if at any point this tags 15.45 to break above the 14 period exponential moving average that's the weekly that's going to help the pink nine period moving average a lot but it's going to take uh, it's going to take at least another two points or another three to four even five trading days to get that weekly uh, technical aspect to improve so that the stochastic uh, gets off uh, from the 7% area into even the 13% area. And for the uh, MACD to cross positive, the histogram's improving. There's a lot of work to be done. So don't get too carried away. The way you're playing it now, I think, is it, it, it's a little risky, but it's I think it's a good way to do it. At this particular moment, right here on April the 19th is exactly when you want to see this, plus the stock that we had for our subscribers today, um, also in the whole outdoors activity area, um, we've tried it before, it hasn't worked. This time, I think there's a much better chance. I can't tell you what it is. It wouldn't be fair to subscribers, maybe in a day or two. But it is up uh, almost 3% from where we entered, maybe 2, two and 3 quarter percent. And that's, it. that's good. But the day is young. It's not even an hour into the trading day. Anything can happen, and it usually does. Um, let's go to a couple of other things that people want to look at here. So a question came in. Uh, let me do this. Oh, I didn't finish that. I'm sorry. I didn't finish what I was talking about. What I did about uh, the – where did I put it? Did I just cancel that by mistake? No, I didn't. About what I do for the Dow. So the person uh, – what, what, a couple of people, but one person in particular asked me something that I don't usually do. I don't usually do it for subscribers. I do it for myself. And that the question was, do do you every day uh, do the, the the levels to look at for the Dow and the S&P? I absolutely have done it on the Dow. Uh, I mean, just for 30, 40 years, every single market day, uh, whether it's public or not, I've always do that. But, and I do this, like for instance, today I said, <clears throat> And the market was really shaky early on. I said today, uh, with a, a trend gauge probably making an error with an extraordinary high nines reading, some form of S&P future strength should help the S&P cash and Dow to rally. So Dow holding a plus 30s and then a plus 50s after 1 p.m. is needed to close uh, nicely high. Otherwise, it's yet another choppy weak close. I'm leaning towards the up close today. Uh, but I also tell you that the levels to watch are 34, 750s plus. That's the first area of resistance. And what's the high today so far in the Dow? Um, where did I go? Let's see, I-N-D-U. So I give you a scenario to look at, uh, 34,785. And what did I say? 34,750s plus. So those are the levels. And you can see why, because we need for the Dow to close nicely above the candle of three days ago. That's going to, this is very interesting. I'm going to take a moment here because the bearishness out there is just palpable. I mean, everything I read, there are a couple of people saying higher prices. Some people are talking about uh, 4,800 in the S&P. I saw something flash by the other day. You know, there are, but they're very isolated. A lot of people are saying, uh oh, this is it. This is it. Well, I don't know. When I've been, I've been in the market a long, long time, and I don't ever recall people talking. So many people talking about the downside and being in unison and being correct. It just doesn't seem to happen. Most think of this. Just go back and let's look at this Dow chart. Do you remember uh, February of 2020 when the Dow hit 29,568? And we had a little bit of a sell-off, 39% in the Dow. How many people were talking about a major sell-off? This is it. This 39% is a bear market in two months. In fact, it was really the last few weeks. Going to 18,213. And I keep talking about this. I keep saying, 
I'm looking at time rather than price as the consolidation. I have no idea whether it's going to be accurate, but I do know what I analyze. And what I'm analyzing is that there's a rotational aspect that started in December of <clears throat> uh, January was the was a moment where I said to subscribers and to, to RT on my show, I said, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, if you're wanting to get longer term college fund positions, just your longer term aspect, <clears throat> even though I'm, I suspect we're very close to some kind of a pullback, which we did have, I'm suggesting that money starts to be put in. And um, that is that kind of longer term look says, wait a minute, We've only, with everything, with a war going on, with inflation at record levels, with high interest rates skyrocketing and hitting 36,950s just four months ago, plummeting to the 32,272 level. Look where we are. This is pretty good action. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, uh, folks. Yes, our automated uh, jump wave resistance is at 44.39.50. We're at 44.36.75 right now. That's where you might find the leg D going to maybe an E, and then it pulls back in the one-minute chart. That's the two-minute chart. And we're watching this because all the way to the 10-minute chart, it says we're just a little bit choppy right now. Could have some kind of a pullback. So let me get back here. This is the question that I had. Uh, why am I here? Oh, um, the question I had was a good question, and that was about SWIM. So I'm thinking SWIM and the other areas within the context of people getting out and just doing this, even if, just think about this, 
you're going to go to one of the one of the uh, uh, outdoor activity places. You're going to go to I don't know about Disney because I can look at Disney, but Disney has so many other things. But Disney's acting very well today. Maybe we'll use Disney as an example. It has the dreaded H. It went to the lower low yesterday. It needs to get back in. It's doing that. Um, it went to a peak C minus and then failed. So in this particular context where you've got um, and theme parks, etc., this is the exact moment right here in the mid second, third, fourth week of April where you want to see these are the stocks you that you want to see. Can they lead into this next phase of the summer activity? And the reason why I say that is, yes, airlines, uh, the fares are, are very high. And yes, airports are um, an issue. Uh, with, with COVID, but we seem to be resolving it to a certain extent. But what's really important right now is that if oil prices are much higher, it's a lot cheaper to take the family in the car or SUV or whatever it is and drive to a place and go one day less to cover those costs. So I suspect that this is the time that you're going to be seeing at least a move towards that area, outdoor activity area. So theme parks, etc. number one. Number two is, um, that's why swim in a sense benefits, but it's really, a, it's a residual benefit because the actual benefit for the people that are buying anything right now, they won't see that this summer at all. There's just no question. I'm pretty sure about that. All right, enough with that. Next question I had was, can I just quickly look at Bank of America? Well, we're not in it anymore. We took our profits. And I said, I, I can see that the bank of, bank's stocks, this is the XLF, um, are going to hold up okay here. I don't think they're going to lead right now. I think they need to digest what they've done up until now. They didn't make, take the, the opportunity. JP Morgan is up nicely. But they all took out that left side low in the arch formation, dreaded H pattern. So far, successful move. Technicals are okay. The weekly technicals in all cases are pretty lousy. I just think that they didn't use the opportunity when the race was screaming higher up until today. They didn't move. They were going down. I think there's something else that's going on, and I haven't been able to pinpoint it, but we haven't gotten back in. I might, but I haven't got back into Bank of America. Um, that's the way it is right now. Another question came in. Could I look at, um, was it here or was it there? Uh, Oh, yesterday we were looking, you remember we were looking at jets? And I said that's the other outdoor activity in a way, acting very nicely, stuck on the 200 period moving average, but not breaking down. Our 51 cents, 22.02. This is the Chapway Falling Axe formation I just demonstrated to you. We're trying to break out above it. We are, but the magnet of the 200 period moving average around about uh, 21.84 is kind of strong. But this is a good start, and the weekly chart technically by Friday we'll see if this is able to improve and that you can get 22.73, maybe touch 23.05. Wow, that'll be a good sign. And that'll say, aha, with everything that's going on, why would the global jets, the United States Airlines Index, ETF, let's call it, move so nicely to the upside? That doesn't happen to be represented fully in the IYT, it looks like the bank stock actually, but it has gone to the lower range of its of its move between the rectangle formation of the 280s down to the 240s, and it just it went under 240, and now it's at 249. So it's a start, and it says, let's see if there can be some follow through. Next question I had was, could I go through, and I'm gonna go through a couple of these things. So I'll talk about the high-grade copper. HG high-grade copper is trading down sharply. 4.70 at point, uh, down 0.09. I think that this is going to be in the consolidation phase. And if I go through each one separately, look, so in the commodity area, crude oil down five almost at 102.67. Gold down a little bit, uh, down 24, not just a little bit, but in that range. So I think what's happening now, if you look at LIT, which is the lithium area, look at that big move. This even the recent move when it screamed up into the 96 area and then plummeted down to 65, ran up again to 81, and now it's trading at 72. I think the whole area of the commodities is having a digestive phase. And that digestive phase to me says that look 
out on the very short term. We had a, a stock that did really, a, a uranium stock that did really nicely. Uh, we took some profits and now it's given back some of the gain and now we're, we're out of it. I don't want to mess around. Even our gold stock, which did really well and is still doing very well, I, I don't want to hang around even though I'm, I'm suggesting to you that this is more a consolidation phase and that we will be moving higher, but when and how? Because sometimes the consolidations for these commodities can be really sharp. Look at wheat. Wheat is at a spectacular move from the 1363 area high of the 8th of March. I don't want to talk about the Chapman Roman candle. We'll talk about that another time. Plummets down to the 50 period moving average in the 960s. Rallies up and it's really struggling. It's not failing, but it's struggling here. Look at soybeans, continuous contract. This one is in the rectangle formation, having made an arch formation to a peak D. Remember, I always say a peak D underneath the previous high. Be careful because there could be quite a pullback. Well, not only pulled back, went to a lower low, and now it's had a really, really good move up to 17.13. It's down a dollar and a quarter today, but it's going towards the upper end of the rectangle range. Look at corn. Does corn? No, oh, does wheat? No, we did wheat. The corn broke out. Now, this is an alternate count. This could be a B, an E slash B. Everything about it so far says at 94% in the stochastic. MACD is good. This should be a B breakout of the of the rectangle, which means you've got a potential for a propeller shaft move, a one to one move from the 648. Six. Oh, 655 area on the 25th of Feb and ran up to a high of 782 on the 4th, pulls back. So you can have a one to we've just had this one to one move of this particular pattern right here. There it goes, one to one. And I like to do this. I'm always very conservative at first. I take that same one to one pattern and I go to the low of the move. Even that conservative low says it still has a way to go to 832. So I think that corn is the best one here. Continuous corn contract. I'll just do this now briefly. Just pull it back away. Remember that high that was made back in July, August of 2012, up in the nine, 894 area. Well, we're getting real close to that in leg C in the monthly chart. Corn looks fabulous as far as um, the commodities go. Now, just a real quick question about high-grade copper. Yes, so high-grade copper is pulled back. So the question came in, what about FCX? Well, free port by foreign uh, copper and gold uh, has almost the same look as corn. Look, a leg C in the week in the monthly chart, and if you look close to the side, are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, boys, we're back. So um, let me just do this for a moment. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm sorry, I've jumped around so much now that I kind of, I think I lost the, the thread that I had a moment ago, not unusual, but yeah. So we're, what is the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF trading up 47 cents at 25.09. Now let me for a moment go to my channel, we've automated uh, resistance levels. So we go to the TLT, the support levels. Last one is at 118.41. Today's low is 118.67. We've smashed through all the weekly ones. The 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 120 minute chart has 118.14. We smashed through 120.15, and then the monthly chart ugh, has 112.43. So that's the one way to look at it. And the other way to look at it is what are the resistance levels? Well, the automated resistance level that just came in is 25.09. We've already hit 25.25. Uh, it's trading right now 25.10, a penny over that resistance. The weekly is at 24, is that 13? 24.83. 24.83. I don't have anything in the monthly charts until it gets to 20. Seven, uh, but I do in the 120 minute chart, it has uh, 2464 and then 25.40. This is what I'm thinking at this particular point. Based on the, the work that I do, if the stochastic hits 96% and flattens out, even though there could be a minor pullback, it is extremely bullish. If there is a turn, it is a turn that takes from where we are three to maybe four sessions for the stochastic to go from 96.22, where it is right now, to below 80%. The chances of doing that without some news that is just, I'm not even sure what you can call it, but it'll have to be extraordinary news, um, it just says that I can call this a leg G, but you really, uh, for, for money uh, preservation, it's better to have the alternate count to say, but it really could be a new B because the MACD is so strong, the 9 is so much above the 14. And remember, I spoke about the inside track repellent zone. Well, that, look where it is. It is so far above that to get a, a smash to the downside, it would take a smash to the downside to take out the last seven trading days and go into the 22.90 area. It's a 25.10 right now. 23.01 is the 40 period exponential moving average support and 23.62. So I, I see no reason why there's an urgency that you've just got to get short the uh, yields um, Oh, I'll get short the TBT and be ready to buy the TLT without real evidence to say you've got the signal. Now, 
Here's what I'm looking at, which I think is getting really close to some kind of a signal to say balance is ready. Doji candle today, gap down, doji candle, leg G. It could be an alternate count, but if it's an alternate count, it has to be G slash B, which is the equivalent of what we're looking at in the TBT, which is the short position of the TLT. But look at the stochastic, 3.85%. If it flatten, it is very seldom. You can go through, I don't know how many charts, you can go through thousands of charts. You will hardly ever, even the bearishest of time, bearishest, the bearishest of times, you will not find the stochastic holding in the, in the single digits at 3% and just holding there for a long time. It just, somehow or other, there's always some kind of a balance. It does, on the upside, hold in the 96-97% area for weeks. Look, I'm showing you this right now. Look how many times the stochastic has been down, and yet it doesn't. Let's find me the barest. Let me go to ARKK. Had a question about that. We'll deal with it now. Even ARKK, which is um, Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF, which is up 2.25 today, up 3.9%, at 59.62. I almost put this in today for subscribers as a buy because I think it held very well, the left side low of 51.85 on the 15th. But look how it's just gone down, down, down. And even then, look, the stochastic couldn't hold flat for very long. This is the longest it's been for quite a while, and it's a 12% now, ARC daily stochastic. So this is what I'm saying to you. Um, there is a difference, and I'm anticipating, and that will be a big market booster if you all of a sudden get the, the um, TLT to, to, to rally from here. I think, and I wouldn't, the only way I would play this is either I'd get in now on the 119.10 on the TLT, expecting, yes, it could go down, but at this point, it probably isn't going to be much more than a point, maybe a point and a half. <laughs> that could be famous last words, but I'm just saying this is the way I would be thinking of it. But I'd prefer to buy a call. What are we in? We're on the 19th of April. Uh, options expiration was last week. So you have to go to May. If you're going on a weekly basis, you could go even to next week, next Friday, if you're doing it on a weekly basis. I would actually go out to May, the third week of May, for the for the monthly option expiration, and I'd buy in the money and then out the money. I'd buy it right here, 119.15. I'd try to get one. I'm not sure what it is. If there's 117 and a half, maybe grab one of those. Or 120, to be a little bit out of the money. And then I'd grab something crazy, like 123. And I just sit there and I say, you know what? Leg D in the weekly chart, MACD is looking horrible, stochastic is at 6.9%. The on balance volume is extremely oversold as it is in the day. I only talk about oversold. Remember, I don't talk about the MACD or the, sto uh, sorry, the stochastic over 80% or under 20% oversold or overbought. I'd never use those terms. But I do on the on balance volume. I use on balance volume overboard look at that turnaround right there on the exact day of the high of the 1st of april uh, S, the tlt is at 132.96 and the on balance volume gives you a fantastic turnaround so that is important look at the turnaround right there in the um, way back in march same thing so i'm just saying if there is going to be a turnaround it's going to happen really suddenly and then the tbt could be pulling back There'll be an initial sudden pullback, then a try to a rally, and then a sort of like an H, H pattern. But I don't think it'll be all in one move. I don't see anything yet that could do it. All in one move. Um, oh, looking out, this monthly chart says we're only in leg C in the TBT, and it should go at least to the highs that were made back in January 2020 of 26.38 or even uh, November of 2019, 27.32. So I do anticipate some kind of a pullback and then another move up in the yields. That's just the way I'm looking at it. Okay, we did that. I'm done with yields. And I'm going to go to... Oh, questions came in. Yes, swim has a big short position. Okay, thank you for that information. So I'll be back in a moment. That's the chapter. Now is up. Ooh, 396.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I wanted to see today how some of these commodity stocks, commodity-related stocks do. Look at Valet. Uh, iron ore pellets, nickel, copper, ferro oil, alloys, etc. I suspect that it's going to go to the 2318 left side high that was made back in 2021 at a peak C. It plummeted really sharply to 1116, got cut more than half, and then it ran up and it's made a peak E under the previous high. That's why I've avoided Valet for the moment. I think it's going to be the right stock, but we have to wait and it made a dreaded H. And I'm comparing the left side 20.96 high of around about the 7th of May, a March, to the high that was made around the beginning of April. Um, and look at that. It's much weaker now. If you do the same thing with uh, FCX, it's a little different. But it has the same characteristic that it's gone to a higher high and it is holding well. So this is almost like the gold and the gold stocks. So the gold stocks are holding um, a little better than gold that had been acting. And that's the same thing here. So I'm just going to say, why not wait a little bit longer if you look at even UUUU, which is the um, energy fuels uranium trading at $9.67, look at the left side high, look at the right side high, and this last high of three days ago. Just hold off a little bit. I'll go through these again a little later in the week, but I think right now they're digesting gains. And look, talk about digesting gains, and look at this. You've got a peak D in the 10-minute in the chart, E-mini. You've got your peak F in the two-minute and the one minute, look at the difference between the two the two different highs and the lower technicals. So we've got a little bit of a pullback here, up 54 in the E-mini at 
4.40 with a high today of 44.47.50. So a little digestive phase, and you've got to consider that some of these spectacular movers have to have some kind of digestion. And that's the reason why I'm saying I'm not giving a turnaround day today on the TLT, but I'm saying all the conditions here are suggesting this is exactly where you should see some kind of valve in, in the TLT fresh on the deal so they can day check out my opening all my data. Thank you for the great program. I'll be back with Tom a little later today.